These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Here we're focusing on the electric force. We want the electric force between two particles. Now, my opinion is, so basically what you're saying is that the equation is confused, uh, you're having trouble with the equation because of the vector aspect, and I agree. My opinion is, in, in an introductory course like this, you don't need that equation. That equation is just going to confuse us, so we can solve this without using that equation. Instead, we should do what we normally do and just use equations to find the magnitudes. We should just use an equation to find the magnitude here, and then there will be other ways to find the direction. It shouldn't be that hard to find the direction. So here's going to be our version of Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law here just tells us the magnitude of the electric force between two charges. Remember that I like to use dots when to indicate we're just focusing on magnitudes or absolute values. One thing this means is it doesn't matter whether the charge is negative or positive, you should plug in a positive number for the charges here because we're just trying to find the magnitudes. Well then, how are we going to find the direction? Well, it should be pretty easy. It's going to be easy to find the direction without using any confusing vector equations, and we'll see how to do that. For example, how would we find the magnitude of the force on Q2? Well, we could just plug into this equation here. I guess I need to tell you. We could just plug into this equation here. We'd have to look up K. They give that, well, they don't give you k here because you're supposed to write it as k, but we could look up the constant of k. Then what would we plug in for q1? 5 plus r of 5. Just the 5. We don't care about the sign because it's a magnitude. What would we plug in for q2? 4. 4. And what should we plug in for r? 7. 7. And then that'll square. Everything's in standard units here, so we can just plug in all of those units and everything will come out right. And that will tell you the force on charge 2. That'll tell you the magnitude of the force on charge 2. And we should just be able to use common sense to figure out the direction of the force. What is the direction of the force on charge 2? Um, towards the force? I mean, towards particle 2? Now, the question is, what's the direction of the force on charge 2? What's the direction of the force on charge 2? Where is that force coming from? Uh, the first particle. Charge one, that's right. Now, are these two charges going to attract each other or repel each other? Repel each other. That's right. In that case, what direction is the force on charge two going to be in? Towards the right. Towards the right. I think that's the opposite of your yep. first guess. But this charge is going to repel this one, so the force over here should be in this direction. Notice we don't need any equations to figure that out. That's basically common sense because we know that like charges repel. And what's the direction of the force on charge one? To the left. So we say this is the force on charge 2, and this is the force on charge 1. And they both have the same magnitude, because they're a Newton's third law action and reaction pair. That's why we only need one formula. We need one formula that will tell us the magnitude for both of these forces, but they don't have the same direction. Remember that Newton's third law says that the forces have same magnitude in opposite direction. Now, this would tell us the directions. We could say this force is to the right and this force is to the left. But how about if we had to describe it in terms of axes? Well, we would say this is in the positive x direction. And what direction is this? Negative. Negative x direction. Or suppose we're just putting in signs. Well, we would say this has whatever the, mag the magnitude comes from here, and the sign would be positive. And how about this force? Well, the magnitude would come from here, and what would this force's sign be? Negative. Negative. 
All right, so again, we don't need that vector equation in the homework. That's just going to confuse us. You'll get full credit if you solve the problem this way. The only reason they present that equation is that in advanced courses, you need that equation to do proofs. But we're not going to be doing any proofs in this class. So it's much easier as usual just to use a formula for the magnitudes. The direction should be common sense. Let's work on this a little bit more. Does that make sense so far? So um, we don't have to express those vector because the forces cancel out. Right? Well, no, not really. The, the point is, we don't need to use, we are expressing the forces as vectors. The point is, we don't need a vector equation to figure things out about the forces. We don't need a vector equation because, so the, the one thing that I'm leaving out of this equation is this confusing r hat term, right? The one thing I'm leaving out is this r hat term, which is what makes it into a vector equation. And the reason I'm leaving that out is the only purpose of r hat is to give you the directions. The only purpose of r hat is to give you the directions, but we, all, we already know the directions anyway. Mm -hmm. We already know the directions anyway, and we don't need the equation to tell us the directions. Let's talk about that a little bit more. What does r hat represent? r hat represents a unit vector that's pointing from one charge to the other. r hat is a unit vector that's pointing from one charge to the other. So this is the equation that I'm suggesting that we use, and here's the equation that they provided us with in the homework assignment and in the book, which I feel is correct but not very useful. R hat here is a unit vector that's pointing between the charges. You can see then that this only affects the direction, not the magnitude. Do you know what a unit vector is? What's the magnitude of a unit vector? One. Right, that's what a unit vector means. That's something that has a magnitude of one. Well then, what's the magnitude here? Well the, magnitude, well, the magnitude of r hat is just 1. So the magnitude is just going to be given by this coefficient over here. So this equation really pops out directly from this. If you wanted to find just the magnitudes, the magnitude of r hat is 1, because it's a unit vector, and then the coefficient gives you the magnitudes. And then r hat is useful for finding the direction, because it points between the charges. However, it's much easier to find the direction just by using our common sense, just like we did uh, over here. So this is a perfectly correct equation. It's just uh, more confusing than is necessary for an introductory class like this. So just plugging in the magnitudes will be enough to get the problem right then? Uh, well, well, no, that, that's still not the point I'm making. We need to know both the magnitudes and the directions. Yeah, so we but, know yeah. the directions. but we'll know the directions from here. That's right. So the point is getting the magnitude from this equation and getting the direction from common sense will be enough to solve the problems, because that's, that's all the information we would get out of this anyway. All this, is gonna, all, all this could have ultimately tell us is the magnitudes and the directions anyway. So all we're saying is we have an easier way to get the directions than this equation can give us. The easier way is just to use our knowledge that opposite charges repel, opposite charges attract, and like charges repel. As we go through the problem, it will be clearer how we're using that. So let's stick with some examples for a second. Let's say we had these charges. What would be the direction of the force on charge two? Um, towards the left. So now this force is to the left. And what's the direction of the force on charge one? Towards the right. Because now we have unlike charges which are attracting each other. How would we describe these directions in words? Well, we could say left and right, or we could say this is in the negative x direction and this is in the positive x direction. So if we needed to put a sign on this force, would this sign be positive or negative? Negative. If this is the positive x direction, this would be negative and this one would be? Positive. And how would we find the magnitude of this force? Do that equation. We would use this equation. What should we plug in for Q2? Uh, force. Yeah, not negative 4. There's no point plugging in the sign. We already used the sign when we got the directions. All this equation is supposed to tell us is the magnitudes. That's the reason why we put these dots over the Q's here, to remind ourselves, since we're only using this for magnitudes, we're just going to plug in the magnitudes of the charges. It doesn't matter here whether the charges are positive or negative. We already took care of the positive and negative aspect when we figured out the direction. But that doesn't affect the magnitude. So that would be, again, how, would we, how we could figure out both the magnitudes and the directions without having to use the confusing R hat equation. What would be the direction of the force on Q1 here? Um, to the left. Or the negative x direction. And what would be the direction of the force on Q2? In the 
Right. Right. And if we were going to find, try to figure out the magnitudes, what should we plug in for Q1? Five. And for Q2? Four. Yeah, we don't bother plugging in the negative signs again.